Okay, we'll, we'll take a break in 10 minutes, all right? So, all right. Um, so this is what I'd like you to learn about this topic. First of all, um, understand what we mean by fiduciary funds, which means what kind of activities are contained within fiduciary funds. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Okay, what the characteristics are. Okay, the accounting characteristics. And then there are four different items that you should be familiar with. These are the types of fiduciary fund. The first one is agency fund. The second one is the investment trust fund. The third one is the pension fund. And the fourth one is private purpose trust funds. What you need to understand is what each one of those means and what the accounting treatment is. Okay. So let's start off with a quick introduction. And when I asked earlier, um, you know, uh, the question, um, since I'm getting learning the names, I think Eric, right, he mentioned the point about fiduciary, why they should not be reported in the um, in the government-wide statements, okay? Now, as I tell you all this, and this is not for right now, two weeks ago, I was at the AAA, which is the Amer American Accounting Association meeting at the GASB. And they're looking at the entire fiduciary fund model. So in four or five years, it might be, something might look different from what you see today, okay? And that was one of the areas that they mentioned. So the first one which I want to mention to you is the easiest one of all the fiduciary funds. And it's called agency fund. You act as an agent. Okay? And look at what it says. Acting as an agent for another government, individual, or private organization. So apparently, it's not yours. You're acting in a custodial capacity, and you're acting on behalf of another. What might be example of this, by the way? The what? We are going to get to the pensions yet. But yeah, that's fiduciary fund. But within the agency fund itself, when a government collects taxes on behalf of another government, for instance, it's an agency fund. When a government has, uh, for instance, New Jersey receives Hurricane Sandy money, the state from the federal government, and it's passed through to the local municipality, that's an agency relationship. Comes and goes. You have no ownership. You cannot say anything about it. You're just purely an agent. You have no decision-making capacity nothing whatsoever. And basically, as it says here, agency fund, use them. You know, if you think it will improve accountability or improve financial management or GASB standards or regulations require it to be such. Let's take a look at the first one of these agency funds, which is special assessments. Do you remember special assessments from somewhere else? We talked about that, right? And special assessments, what are special assessments? OK, so you have a couple of, you, couple of property owners on a block. The sidewalk is just shot. You know, the whole side, there's no sidewalk. You want to repair that. Is everybody going to do their own job? No. They go to the town and say, would you do this for us? The town says, yes, we'll do it for you, but you'll have to pay for it. Say, good. Let's pay for it over the next 30 years. This way it can be more affordable. That's called a special assessment. Now, this is what I want you to remember here. Key point. 
when the government goes out to borrow money to do this work, two things can happen. One, it has the ultimate liability to pay the debt back, or the people who you're doing the work have the ultimate liability to pay it back. When you go out and sell bonds, the bond investors want to know what? They want to know who's going to ultimately be responsible. If it's the government, it doesn't belong here. It belongs in the governmental funds, under debt service funds. There. But if it's the property owners that are ultimately responsible, then it belongs in the agency funds. Okay. And that's why I see that when government is not obligated in any manner. And we'll talk about tax agency fund next. So tax agency funds, and I think I spoke to you before about this. The way taxes are collected in New Jersey is you get one tax bill from the town. And the town has what? On that tax bill, it shows amount for the town, amount for the schools, and amount for the county. And what does the town do? Take the portion for the school, send it to the school. Take the portion for the county, send it to the county. In other parts of the country, it's the reverse. It's the county who collects it and sends it individually to the towns. And I say that because that's the example in the book. County is collecting it and sending it to everybody else. Why would it want to do that? Well, just think about it. Instead of getting three bills, now you get what? One bill. So they're saving, right? There's some savings, right? Everybody saves. Though, if the town is doing all that or the county is doing that, do they want to do this at no cost? They're incurring a cost, right? So what do you expect all the others to do for you? Give you a cut or a percentage. So if it costs an administrative fee is 1%, what do you expect? Every dollar they collect, they need to give you a penny, right? Of that dollar for your administrative fee. That is the example that's shown in the book. So this is what happens. This is the example in the book. The county sends a tax bill. They receive the money from everyone, all the taxpayers. Then there is an accountant sitting there and says, 30% oh, goes to the school, 30% goes to this town, so on and so forth. And you know what? 1% is for us. Let's deduct 1% from each one of them. That's a tax agency fund. The last one, pass-through agency fund. Notice in this again, what's happening? The people who are collecting this, they can't keep that money. They have to do what? Disperse it to those who should be receiving that. The pass-through agency fund, which it says is not as common but can be found, is where a government receives a grant. Except it has to be passed through another government. Example, a municipality, a shore town, suffers damage from the storm. The federal government sends to the state of New Jersey, not directly to the town, but to the state of New Jersey, money. And that money then is transferred by the state to the town. Now, this is the question. You are the account for the state of New Jersey. What's happening? You're getting money from the federal government, and then what are you doing? Sending it to the town. The question is, does the state of New Jersey recognize that as a revenue or not? Does the state have any involvement in it? No, it's just a check coming, and what do they do? Send it to. And if you get that, you've gotten the whole thing about agency, pass through agency fund. Basically, what it says is, Gasby says is that if you have no involvement in the grant, none whatsoever, 
then you can use a pass-through agency fund. If you as the state decide who's going to get money and who's not going to get money or administer that fund, you can't use agency fund because now you have the discretion and that's recognized as revenue. Okay, and this, these are the examples that are given in the book.